Holy cow, what have we got here? Well, this is Amplitube 4, and let me tell you, this thing is an absolute beast. Um, I've got it running on a simple riffing rhythm guitar in this bit of music. Check it out. <laughs> This is a rig I built myself, okay? Um, this thing is an absolute beast. All of that sound that you're hearing from the guitar is entirely coming from ampl Amplitude. No other pr plug-in effects of any type. Just the Amplitude is providing that sound. If I turn it off, this is the raw sound of the recorded guitar, um, which I recorded by just plugging my guitar straight into the instrument input of the USB interface. <laughs> So Amplitude is providing everything, all the ambience, room sound, everything. As I said, it is a total beast. Now, this is going to be a long one, right? There's a lot to look at with this. It's really deep. There is no manual for this anywhere, right? So this is a review, but also if you're a beginner to all this, I'm going to show you how it works um, as far as everything I've learned playing with it a few hours here and there over the last couple of days, right? All right, so buckle up, this is a big one, a lot to look at. But before we get into how it all works, right, uh, all its features, let's just check out a few of the presets to give you an idea of the range of sounds this thing can come up with. Now, when I say presets, I'm going to go through these presets now, which are all in bolder categories, some of which have subfolders, or most of which have subfolders, right? And um, as I go through these presets, a preset is the entire rig. Right, any stomp boxes, one or two amps with insert effects, one or two more, uh, one or two cabs, and then there are racks of post processing effect, processing effects after the cabs. Uh, so these presets I'm stepping you through are the entire rig, everything in it. Not just we're not just stepping through different amps, right? So to do this, what I'm going to do is go to the first major uh, preset category, Amplitude Four. In the first subcategory, British Collection. In the first sub subcategory, Brit 8000, and choose the first preset. And then if I step down each time with this arrow, I'm just stepping through the presets. All right, and then it will go from this first preset into the next subcategory, the next, the next, the next, then into the miscellaneous ones, etc. Right, and I'll just run through some presets. And trust me, I'll do this for a couple of minutes, and we're not even going to get through 2% of the presets or 5% of the presets. There are hundreds of them, but this will just give you a rough idea, right? Um, here we go. Tell you what, let me just turn these... Um, turn the upper frequencies down on those over it's just a bit less cymbal splash here we go let's keep going <laughs>
<laughs> okay, and now we're into some bass presets. And in that few minutes there, just stepping through, all I've gone through is this first major folder, Amplitude 4 presets, just all these and all the miscellaneous ones. And now we're into the second main folder, the very first preset. <laughs> we, we haven't even gone through. There is just tons, absolutely tons. You've got all these collection ones, Ampegs, Fenders. There's just tons and tons of different rigs, right? Absolutely tons of them. Okay. <coughs> so, how does it all work? Okay. Um, well, as I said, these presets here are for entire rigs, the entire combination of everything. Pedals, amps, cabs, insert effects, post-processing effects, uh, or post rig effects, etc. Right, and um, you choose those from the list here, from these categories, and you can build your own custom folders. Here's four custom folders I've made: grind rigs, my amp rigs, my heavy rigs, my orange rigs, my stereo amp rigs. Are five folders I've created, in fact. Further to that, there's a default you can go to. You can import the old legacy presets, and you can even go to the preset exchange which I've not tried, but I presume it's a, an online area for registered users where they can exchange their own presets. There's, there are a huge amount of presets, uh, of rigs, right? But there's, there's also this preset browser where you'll see that the presets have all sorts of different categories, right? And as you choose each one, it doesn't load it. It shows you the configuration of the rig in this map below. Right, and you can sort of go through and go. Well, look, I want. I'm showing electric guitar rigs at the moment, right? Tick electric guitar, and now that's ticked with a dot. So we're looking at electric guitar rigs in the browser. Okay, and um, I can then say, okay, it's electric guitar rigs only we're looking at with the sound character of extreme. Right. And then um, the style is metal. And that's just gives me all the extreme electric guitar metal ones that have been categorized as such. I click on them, I see the configuration of each one, and then I can double click to load one, right? And these configurations of the signal flow of everything in the components of the rig, right? Now that signal flow is reproduced here on this red bar. and you can switch signal configurations. There are eight different ones. And as you switch these, Amplitude remembers what's already in the rig. If I switch to a different signal configuration, it doesn't destroy everything I've already built. It remembers it and just changes the configuration, ready to add in more cabs or more amps. Or if you've already got two amps and you switch to a single amp configuration, it'll take one of the amps away and just you're left with amp A or whatever, right? So let's go through the different signal configurations and then we'll look at how the stuff all works. Um, configuration one is a mono input into the tuner. There's the tuner, I've not tried it, but it looks okay. The signal then flows into the two pages of stomp boxes, up to six stomp boxes per page in series. Then the signal runs into the single amp with its own insert rack, into a single cab. The signal then flows into two post racks in parallel, uh, sorry, series, and then off to the output. Configuration number two is a stereo or mono input into the tuner. The signal is then split to the two stomp boxes uh, pages in parallel. Each feeds its own amp with its own insert rack. Each amp feeds its own cab. And then each cab feeds its own post rack. They're in parallel and then the signal is summed to the output. Configuration three is a mono input into the tuner. Both through then through both pages of stomp boxes in series into a single amp with an insert rack. The signal then leads the amp and goes to two cabs. It's split to two cabs. And then the sum, the signal is summed after the cabs and goes into the post racks in series and off to the output. Configuration four is a mono input into the tuner, into the stomp box pages in series. The signal is then summed and split to two amps, each with its own insert rack. And then both amps feed their own cabs. And then after the cabs, the signal is summed into the two post racks in series and off to the output. Configuration five, mono input into the tuner, into the two stop box pages in parallel, which are then summed into a single amp with an insert rack. The amp feeds out 
and is then split to two cabs, each with its own post rack in parallel and they're then summed to the output. Configuration 6 is stereo mono in, into the tuner, then to the two pages of stomp boxes in parallel, each feeds its own amp with its own insert rack, each amp feeds its own cab, the signal is then summed after the cabs and then split into the two racks, the two post racks in parallel and then re-summed and off to the output it goes. Configuration 7 is a mono input into the tuner, to two stomp box pages in parallel which are then summed and then split to the two amps, each with its own insert rack, each amp feeds its own cab. After the cabs the signal is summed and goes into the two post racks in series and off to the output. And finally configuration 8 is a mono input into the tuner, into the two stomp box pages in par uh, parallel. They're then summed into a single amp with an insert rack that feeds its own cab and the signal leaves the cabs goes into the two post racks in series and then off to the output. And if you choose any of these items you can turn it off with the on off button there so that turns off cab B. If I was using it I would only hear cab A. This rig, this configuration just uses a single cab. Um, so let's for example choose uh, this configuration 3. The single amp feeds two cabs. So I can turn off or on either cab and listen to just the single cab and then switch this cab off. So I'm just listening to that one, etc. Right, like that. If I choose a two amp configuration, I can, this is two amps each feeding their own cab, I can take this amp, turn it off. So I'm just listening to that amp. Turn that amp off. So I'm just listening to that amp, etc. Okay, so that's the on-off switch for any part, including the stomp box pages. They can be turned on and off as well. And the post racks can be turned on and off, as can the insert racks. You can always off on anything in the single chain. All right. All right, that's the configuration, the single flow configurations. As I said, as you switch them, logic um, uh, Amplitude remembers what's already in your rig and just modifies the single configuration. <coughs> to add in or take away different parts or change the signal flow. So look, let's go with um, this basic configuration one, which is a mono input into the tuner, into the stomp box pages in a series. Then they go out to a single amp with an insert rack, which feeds a single cab. And then after the cab, the signal passes into the two processing racks and then to the output. And... Um, Whereas here you're choosing the whole rig, right, the presets. If we now set up this signal chain and we choose the amp, this is a single amp and cab rig, there's my amp. And we change the actual amp, not the other parts of the rig, just the amp with the little drop down here. And this is where you're choosing your raw amps. This is amplitude ones in clean, crunch, lead and bass. Right? There's two ampegs different loads of Ampex. There's a carbon. There's the classic brick collection. These are your Marshalls. There's a couple of these Dr. Z ones. There's a couple of Engels. There's all these Fenders. These are raw amps, right? These Fenders, Gallen Kruger, Jet City, and Leslie's, but these are locks. I haven't upgraded to these. A couple of Marshall Slash ones. These are allowed to be called Marshall, if it's a Marshall Slash, apparently. Some Mesa Boogies, Oranges, Soldano, and a THD. These are raw amps, right? Now, some of these amps, that's like a, an entire amp. You just switch the amp, right? But this type of amp here, there are some of these hybrid ones um, where you can change the preamp, the EQ section, and the power amp. Like here, I can change to a different power amp. Yeah. Different EQs, tube, solid state, etc. And as I do that, some controls disappear or change. Right? And I can change the pre. Right? So I've changed to a different pre, a vintage B. I can then choose a different EQ. Right? That's a solid state EQ or a tube or another tube, etc. That's a tube vintage combo. All it has is a presence control, etc. And I can change the output power amp. So some of them you can mix and match like that, and others, that's another mix and match one, based around a fender by the look of it. There's another mix and match, another mix, that's a base one. 
But this type of this amp I've chosen is just a raw amp. Right? I can't change any of the other sections. There's another whole raw amp. This is another one you can change the sections. Right? That one you can change the sections. That one, that one, but that one you can't. It's just a whole amp. Right? That one you can change the sections. Etc. That is a whole amp, like a high watt. Etc. That's a whole amp, a Marshall. Okay, so you choose the raw amp. So in here, I could put in, I don't know, let's put in an angle. Right? That is my raw amp. There's nothing else in the chain. No stomp boxes, no insert effects. Now the cab is matching the amp. We'll come to the cabs in a bit. And there's no post rack effects at all. So I've chosen a raw amp. Right? <laughs> and then I, I can... Um, there's two different channels on this amp. Gain, low, high. Clean lead. So I will... Okay, so there I've got a kind of spit scooped, quite a meaty sound, quite a bit of bass. And by the way, some of the amps, just to show you, um, like this one, you can bridge. Okay, so I can have input one or two, and I can bridge or not bridge. <laughs> Etc. Right. Uh, let me go back to my. Um, I've got the undo, 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 undo. Can I go back to the one I had? No. Okay. So let me choose it from there. I had the angle. Actually, it's remembered what I put. Look at that, that is what I had set. It's remembered it, even though I stepped through and showed you a different amp, right? Okay, so there's my angle. It's a very meaty, a lot of bass in the tone, scooped out mid a bit. Not too bright. Right? Now, if I want to now, I can put some insert effects into the insert rack for the amp. Now, as I said, I don't know where these uh, processes and effects are inserted in the amp chain, whether it's just after the preamp, before the EQ, or after the EQ, I don't know. But in, in here I can put any insert effects I want. There's all these ones in the amplitude category. There's some Fender ones, there's these full tone ones, and all the stomp boxes can be put into the amp as an insert type effects. Right. These are not pedals before the amp, these insert effects after the signal's passed into the amp. At least it must have gone through the amp preamp, right? So you can put up to four of those in and they could be on, off, bypassed, etc. And they can be dragged and moved around. So if I just like put one there and put another one there, as far as I know, yeah, you can drag the order of those, they can be switched on and off, etc. And of course tweaked, right? Empty. Empty. So there's my amp, it goes into the cab. Now let's look at this cab business. This starts to get really deep now. Now, the cab and room and mic area here, um, whichever of these pages you're in, if you click that selected tab again, it just the, the menu disappears off to the side, all the controls, and you just see the raw room with the mics and the overheads and everything like that. Now, the match button's on, so I've got an angle amp, it's match to an angled cab, to the matching cab. But you, you can choose any cab you want, and there's a colossal amount of cabs, just a huge amount to choose from. 
every possible type of cab. Bass cabs, guitar cabs, everything from modern metal slanted 4x12s to tiny little, you know, little vintage speaker amps, uh, whatever you like. Different size speakers, different amount of speakers, just a huge variety. So that's the matching cab, but I could, um, I could go, well, you know, I want this angle going into this Marshall cab. Right? And then. Now let's match it back to the angle cab. It's a little bit duller, right? Uh, further, whichever cab you choose, there's this control here. Now there's no manual, but this adjusts the tone and the resonance of the cab, I think. And that's variable for every single one of the cabs. And that's nothing to do with the mics or the room, just the actual sort of resonance and tonal quality of the cab, right? Every cab can be changed like that. So if I was to go and choose this little tiny cab like that. Okay, there's less change on that one, but there is a subtle change going on. Let's try this champ. Let's turn the output volume up a bit. Okay, so you can do all that. So um, if I go with the Brit cab, which is the Marshall, that's the amp um, cab chosen. Now, when you've chosen any 12 inch cab, the speaker page is operational, but only for 12 inch cabs. If I go back here and choose something different, like what's that? Well, that's a single 12 inch, so I still can change the speakers. All right, as long as it's a 12 inch, you can change the speakers. But uh, that, yeah, that is a not 12 inch cab. So the speakers don't work. You can't change the speakers, but any, that's a tube of 12, so I can change the speakers, right? So any cab that uses 12 inch speakers, however many, you can use the speaker page and go through the speakers. And again, this does make a difference. Not just tonally does the sound change. And these speakers sound different in different cabs, subtly different in different cabs. Not only does the tone subtly change, but you'll notice that there are different resonance, amounts of resonance in different frequency areas for different speakers. Now this rig is using two mics. Let's quickly go to the mixer page. We'll come back to this. I'll mute the room, oh, mute the room mics and mute the second mic here, the SM, uh, the um, Neumann U87. And now we'll go back to the speakers and all we're listening to is the single mic, the SM57. There's an SM57 there, right on axis in front of the speaker. And now I'll go through the different speakers and look at the amount of speakers you get. Everything from vintage to modern. Like uh, Brit, where is it? Brit Green, that'd be a greenback, right? <laughs> Okay, so I'll just go through them. Here we go. And so we're listening just to this mic, focus on this one speaker that we're changing. Turn the output down a bit. Hang on.
<laughs> now as I was going through that I think it was that one I quite liked it's quite beefy and meaty that's still chunky a bit duller that Brit Darkness one is duller again well, that's quite got a, quite a muffled tone but I can always go back to my cabinet and adjust now we're listening to that one speaker that we've changed with one mic pointing at it I can still overall change the tone of my cabinet here okay so they can do all that if we go back to the speaker page, this is a 4x12, and believe it or not, I can change every one of the four speakers. I can make them all the same of whatever speaker I want, or I can have this speaker that this mic is pointing to have one particular speaker, and then this second speaker that the other mic is pointing to give it a different speaker. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's absolutely balmy. But you can do all that. Every single speaker in any 12-inch cabinet can be changed. All right? Right. Um, so what did I do? I put a Brit Alnico. Is that a five or an S? A Brit Alnico S. In that one, I'm going to bring in the second mic. So I'll choose the same one, the Brit Alnico S, for that one as well. So these two um, speakers in the cabinet, that the two mics are going to point at, have got the Alnico ones, and the others have got the default Brit 80. Right. I don't think you can turn a speaker off. I don't think there's any one. No, you can't do that. Okay, so now to the mic page. Now, um, you need to go to the mixer page before that. Switch the second mic channel back on. There are two mic channels there. Then there's the room mic channel here in stereo. There's also a DI feed here, and there's the final output, right? So, to the mic page. You can have a single or double mic. Um, here's the list of mics down the side. The same for both mic stand. Um, you could, the choice is the same. So I choose mic one or mic two and um, I can position anywhere on axis or off axis, any distance away, down more, to, more towards where the other speaker is, lower down the cabinet or up at the top, whatever I want. And we're just, uh, let's go back to the mixer page and mute everything. So we're just listening to that single mic, this mic, the first mic, the SM57. Now I'll move it around, you'll hear the difference. etc right so you position your mic and then you can change the mic again with back of the mixer we're only listening to this mic everything else is turned off so now i'll go through the different mics that's an sm57 that is a electro voice um it's an eb20 or whatever they're called Some sort of vintage dynamic. There's a Sennheiser. That is some sort of dynamic. Don't know who makes that. Another one. There's a pair of SM57s there on a single clip at 45 degrees. Sort of bottle mic, uh, C12. There's some Neumanns here. That one, I don't know what that is. 
so an AKG 414. That one I think is a Coles or something. And there's this tube one. And a ribbon, a couple of ribbons. Finally this one called Velo 8, which is very meaty and beefy. <coughs> Okay, so you can change the mic in its position. So I'll have the SM57 on axis there. Back to the mixer, give it a bit of level. Bring in the second mic channel here. Let's mute the first one. Uh, which is by default this Neumann. Um, choose mic two. So I've got my two mics there, and that second mic could be changed, it can be moved wherever you want, etc. Right? And then we blend the two together here. Okay, now we've got these room mics as well here, right? On the room page. You can choose between four different types of room mic. Right. You can adjust the width either here or by dragging either on either mic like that. Right. And unless we go back here and just solo the room mics and just hear that. Okay, um, so as you adjust the width, you do hear the width change. Uh, Here we go. Yeah, so that's your room mics, and you could blend that in with your two close mics. But further, the room mics are obviously picking up the sound of the room, and the room itself could be changed, right? So go back in, just raise those room mics a bit. Let's check out some of the rooms. Okay, so the rooms are a big live room. Just widen the overheads a bit. Then you, which has got more um, reflections, and it's a longer decay time. Studio A, which is a semi-dead uh, room. It's got some wooden floors, some rugs. Not too much uh, panelling on the walls. But it's more controlled and less live than the big live room. You've got the booth, very tight. Studio B is a tighter, deader room, more than Studio A. And Garage. Okay, so you choose your room, I'll choose the booth, and then I'll go back to my, um, I can adjust my overheads. Go back to mixer and blend that amount of room mic with the other two mics. And then further you've got this DI feed here with a variable phase. It's a command left click on anything to reset. Uh, the three mic channels, the two mono uh, cabinet mics and the stereo overhead mics, their phase can be reversed with the reverse switch. They can be muted and soloed. They can be panned. There's a final output channel here with the pan control as well, right? It's very, very, very customizable. Absolutely fantastic. So uh, there you go. I've set my amp, set my cab, 
chosen a different cab, not the matched one, different speakers uh, for the two that the mics are facing at. Set my mics, position, etc. Room, overheads, and my balance and everything like that. And I said this side panel here, whichever is the active panel, you just click on it again and it disappears off and you get to see the whole thing. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, okay, now post effects in this particular rig. Uh, configuration number one the signal then flows out of the single cab into the two post racks in series now again we can put effects in here right all these ones amplitude ones fender ones full time ones and again the stomp boxes can be put in here right so here for example I'll put in a tube compressor Right. A lot of drive and a lot of ratio. I'm going to really hammer down on this. Longer release time so it doesn't get a chance to recover, which is flattening it out a bit more. So there's quite an ambient sound, which I can change by lowering my overhead mics I quite like that sort of hollow -y. yeah a bit wider like that let's say a lot of compression there and then some reverb now this is not amp reverb okay this particular amp doesn't have reverb some the amp has an actual reverb on it that's reverb inside the amp but this is um, after the cabinets in these post racks all right, we're going to put in a digital reverb here. Uh, digital reverb. Not too much decay time. A little tiny bit of mix. Again, the order of these can be switched around. turned on and off etc okay so I might also put in here um, a graphic EQ right, and um, I don't know brighten things up around there a little like that okay and again the order of these can be changed so I'll put the graphic at the start to brighten it up then into the compressor where it gets crushed Okay, etc. I could put more stuff in the second rack. Okay, to the, um, now let's look at the stomp box pages here. Um, let's put a little bit of um, chorus in. Uh, modulation. There's two choruses in this collection, these, this Amplitube collection. I haven't looked to see if there's any other choruses anywhere. Mm, phase uh, one. So there might be, I don't know. But uh, in the Amplitube collection, you've got two choruses, this one and this one, which also has vibrato you can bring in. Oh, you can take, you can take the um, chorus off, just have vibrato. Actually, no, you have to have it on. Of 
vibrato. That's chorus. Oh, this is just straight chorus. So there's a smidge of chorus there. These can be, you can change the order of pedals, move them to any slot you like. To get rid of one, just choose empty. Uh, in the rack, you know, these can be moved you know, any way you want, change their order, etc. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll put you in a stomp box. There's tons, as I said, tons to choose from. I know what these T-Rex ones are. Replica, what's that? Some sort of echo. You know, put as many pedals as you like in. Okay, so that that's a rig I built, right? Now, the, this was all done in configuration one. All right, signal comes in past the tuner into the two stomp box pages in series into a single amp with an insert rack, which we're not using, feeding a single cab, then out to the post racks in series. Now, if I change configuration, let's say, to that, configuration three, that changes the configuration. We now get the signal coming out of the amp and being split to two cabs. Then it again it goes into the two post racks in series. Everything's the same apart from now we've got two cabs. The signal coming out of the amp is split to two cabs. Well it completely remembers everything in my setup. My stomp box, my amp with all its settings, the cab I already created, and it gives me a second cab. Huh? <coughs> For some reason when you bring in a second cab when you're using a single amp you seem to get this one this 4 by 10 open vintage so now I've got two cabs and I can mess with this second cab so if I want to not listen to the original cab I can turn it off there now we're just listening to this cab I'll go with that, that red Marshall. Just leave all the mics as they are and everything, right? I'll leave the balances just, just for speed, right? Leave the room and everything. Leave it all as it is. Uh, and now this is the original cab on. We'll turn the new second cab off. So we're just listening to the original cab now. And then turn that off and listen to the second cab. Okay, and these two cabs, um, now they're both on, I can balance them and pan them, pan that one over there, then that one, second cab, balance it over there. There's a two cab rig now, but the point is when I changed the signal configuration, Amplitude remembered everything I'd already built and just gave me that extra cab slot. Yeah, if I change to a two amp configuration, uh, it remembers my original amp, it remembers the cab, remembers the post effects, but they're now in parallel, just coming off this one cab, but it now gives me a second amp. With, this, with its own cab, so I could then, you know, it remembers everything and just gives me a new, uh, an extra amp and cab now. Now, once I've set that amp and that cab up, so I've got two of them in parallel, blend them and everything, get them, get them sounding right, uh, then if I want the same rack of effects that are on the original cab, on the second rack coming out of cab B, because with this configuration, 
each cab feeds its own rack. There is, these are in parallel, right? So these effects won't be on cab B. But what I can do is I can go to rack A, right click, copy. Go to rack B, right click, paste. Then it pastes the graphic in with the tweaks I did. Go to rack A, the compressor, copy. Go to rack B, paste it in, paste. Go to rack A, copy the reverb, go to rack B, paste it in. And now both racks have the same output effects with exactly the same settings. So if I turn this amp off, we're listening to this amp, the new one. the other amp back on I'll give that a different amp with a bit, bit, of, bit of grind whereas this one's more distorted put it back on now we're hearing both rigs this cab is panned to the left for the angle rig this cab is panned to the right we've got a cleaner grittier sound rig to the right and a more distorted one to the left etc blah 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 right Yeah, it's just brilliant this thing absolutely incredible now in case i didn't say it all these channels they can be phase reversed they can be muted soloed there is the di feed i think i mentioned that with a variable phase uh the overhead width can be controlled from here but also obviously um you can do it by dragging here you can do it in the room with the width control here but on the mixer you've got the width control there as well and the whole pair of overheads can be panned one way or the other, whatever width they're at. And they're both mic, close mics can be panned if you want. Yeah, okay. Um, what other stuff we got? Well, down the bottom here, there's an input uh, level meter with an input trim, more or less input. There's a noise gate you can bring in with threshold, release, and depth. Um, this on thing is to do the tuner. The value control here, whatever you're tweaking, it shows you the value. As I said, command left click to reset any parameter. These controls here, these are like quick access. You know, when you choose something, like if I choose the amp, only I can adjust the volume, just the output volume of the amp is what I'm adjusting. You don't see this change, but just, just so if I go to the cab, then I get these controls, which control the pan, the volume, the phase, and the DI level. These are sort of quick access controls, I suppose. <coughs> okay, there's that. Um, further up here, there's the tempo. Now, at the moment, it's set to the same as the project, the DAW project, the door project. I'm using Logic. That's the project tempo I'm using, 120, so it matches it. But in the preferences here, uh, uh, by default, it is set for the tempo source to be the same as the host. So it matches Logic's um, project tempo. But you can change that to presets so that when you load up any preset, the timing of any delay type effects, anything that's got uh, rhythmic timing will be set at the time that the preset was saved at rather than otherwise it'll match to the tempo and you can override that with tap tempo as well right um, other settings on this preferences page for the reverb the amp reverbs that's not the rack effect reverbs but for any amps that have a reverb control built in like the fenders or whatever you can go with real spring or digital. I presume this is convolution and this is uh, done with algorithms. I don't know. Uh, again, with the room sounds, it could be real ambience or digital. Again, I presume that's, um, that's, that's convolution and that's done with algorithms. There's a global cabinet bypass. The resolution of your cabinet can be in high, mid and low. This selection here allows you to turn off like high quality or turn it on. Stomp oversampling, pre-oversampling, amp oversampling and high res on off, right? So there's these um, preferences there. Okay, further, now we've got some automation stuff here. This auto one, there are 16 parameters for your door automation. And you can go through your rig components and choose anything to be assigned um, to a, a parameter, right? 
So um, let's say I can bypass my stomp box. I add that in. Right, that is now automation parameter one bypass of the stomp box. Yeah, and then if I go to my door automation, right, and uh, drop the thing down, amplitude. Amplitude 4, if I choose parameter 1, it's the bypass for the foot pedal for the first stomp box, right? So they, these things don't get a title, but on your automation map here, you assign different parts of your rig to the 16 available automation slots, which you can then control in your door, right? And that can these can be added, removed, moved up and down in order, etc. Right? Further to that, there's MIDI control. Right, this is CC controlling, not door automation. You've got program changes, there are some already set, but you just choose any program change and right click, and it takes you into the choosing a rig, choosing a preset. So any um, program change can be assigned to load any rig, any, any preset, the entire rig, right. Then you've got also these control change ones, which is your CCs. You can use learn or add in and assign a parameter of some part of your rig to a MIDI CC uh, to be controlled. Right. Okay. So that's that. Okay, so what else have we got? Well, we've got this preset browser. Let's have a look at this now. I briefly showed you this before. Um, the preset browser is where every preset can be shown or just categories of preset can be shown. And as you step and choose each one, a map at the bottom, as I already showed you, shows the signal flow and the configuration of that rig. So you can kind of see what, it, what that rig is. And then if you want to load it, you double click and that loads it. Right? Now, the preset browser um, has different categories. Well, first of all, you can stack uh, ascending or descending. Um, that's sorry, that's ascending, that's descending. Oop, there's a storm just started. There might be some thunder in a minute. Um, so some of the columns you can stack them ascending or descending alphabetically. And you've got lots of different columns in the browser here. And some of them you can tick like the style here. I could tick metal and rock. And now metal and rock are going to be shown. And I can stack them either rock first, go through the rock ones, and then come on, there's a lot of them, and then metal, or the other way around, starting at metal. And then into the rock ones, right? Um, if I want to clear all of this, I just click all, and all the categorizations that you can tick disappear, and that's every single preset, right? That's and again when we say a preset, we mean the entire rig, everything in it, right? But we can um, show the presets by category, as well as stacking them, ascending or descending alphabetically. So, for example, in the instrument here. I've got it set to all, so it shows presets for everything, all right? Electric guitars, basses, yeah, all sorts. But if I want to, I can go to this instrument column, and I can say, well, look, just show me stuff for electric bass. And so now they're just all electric bass presets, all right? Or detick that now again. I'm back to looking at all. For sound character, I can say, well, look, I'm not having any other qualifying um, characteristic, but I want, show me everything that is an extreme preset. Now they're all extreme presets. Or I can detick that. Show me all the crunch presets. They're all crunch now, right? Or show me all the high gain ones, and it's high gain only. You can have multiples of these. So, for example, I can have high gain and extreme, right? And then stack them by extreme first or high gain first, right? 
you can have multiple qualifiers here. And if you want to clear all qualifiers because you don't know which ones are selected and you don't want to go through them all because there's further ones over here. There's the style, different genres that is, right? There's the pickup type. Um, Tele, Strat, Les Paul, Fat Strat, Super Strat, P Bass, Precision Bass, Jazz Bass, Music Man, Soap Bar, Pickup Bass, Pizza Bridge, Pizza Contact, Sound Hole, Internal Mic, Acoustic, P90, Other, etc. Right? Um, what else have we got in terms of the category types you can show? Instrument type, you know? Because you might want to have some stuff all for, you know, solid body guitars, semi acoustic, whatever, right? Pickup position is another one. Again, probably more relevant to bass, uh, bass rigs. You might build bass rigs specifically for playing at the neck or the bridge or whatever uh, with your favourite bass. Uh, song section is is the sound for intro, verse, chorus, bridge, etc. And then you can put in keywords, but that's not a category, a category you can tick, right? But these categories can be multiple ticked. But if you kind of get a bit mixed up, like you, you know, you don't want to go through all of these categories and detick them you just click all and it takes you back to showing every single preset then you can stack them by name or whatever you like right you can refresh and it just goes through and refreshes everything like that okay now the point i'm showing you this is because there are all these cat categories and everything and as i said when you select it shows you the rig so you can go through and go, what is this one? Oh, right, it's that amp with these cabs, those effects. What's this one? Um, what's this funky Tron one? Oh, well, it's that amp with that pedal, that cab, these processing effects after the cab, etc. right? What's that one? It shows you, and then double-click to load. Now, the reason I'm showing this first is this. If I load up... Right. There's a rig that I built. Angle is a two amp rig, an angle amp, and this other amp, both feeding their own cabs, which are set as I want them. And then each cab feeds into the rack of the same effects, the one I just built and everything, right? Now, I've already saved this, but I'm gonna do this again. Look, save as. Now, when you go to save as, you get a chance to fill in all those category things if you want to. Now, this is the title you're filling in here, but you can also save to a folder. Now the folders, let's just cancel that, are the folders as you see them here. You can save into the factory folders, but here's folders I've made myself. Right? So when I do save as, I first can choose which folder I'm saving into. When I select this folder, that doesn't save the preset, it just chooses where I'm gonna save it. So I click this slot here, save to folder. It opens up this browser, and there I can see all the factory folders and inside them are the subfolders, and inside those can be further subfolders, etc. And also, I can see um, the ones that I made. There's my grind, these are custom folders I made grind rigs, my amp rigs, my heavy rigs, my orange rigs, my stereo amp rigs, my stereo grind rigs, whatever. Now, at this point, I can create a new folder, either a completely new folder or go into a folder and create a new subfolder inside it. Right. So let's take. I'll make a new folder, and I'll call this just something simple. My amps two or something or yeah or whatever. Right. And I create that creates a new folder, and then I choose open here. Open. That doesn't save it. That just prepares in this general save panel where I'm going to save this preset I've created, or I've opened, tweaked, and modified, and I'm resaving it as a different name. So I choose the folder there, then I can put a description here. Well, I'll leave that as it is. It's a grind angle and a, and a grit amp. The sound character, this is to do with the characterizations in the preset uh, browser, right? I can give it high gain, crunch, whatever I want. So if I were to tick high gain and extreme, if I then look, it did, you can't multi-latch these, right? Like you can when you're browsing. You can just give it one category. So I'll call it, I'll put it in the um, high gain category. Then I can give it an artist title here. Well, I can make that my name, right? Is it for a solid body? You don't have to have that, that can be none. 
right, for the instrument type, or I could say, well, it's for a particular type of instrument. Pickup position, again, it could be none, or you can say, well, this is specifically for playing my favourite guitar, or whichever one it is you, you use, at the neck position, or the middle, or the bridge, or whatever. Then you can give it a song section, whether it's intro, verse, etc. Right, this is all the same as, as I showed you in the browser. What type of instrument is this, is this for? Well, I'll, I will tick that as electric guitar. The style, well, it is rock, but it could be, um, if I choose metal, again, you can't multi-tick these. So it's either going to be metal, rock, or whatever. So I'll, I won't call it metal, I'll call it rock, this one. Now, I can put a title for the song that this, this um, preset belongs to. I could choose the type of pickup. Well, I'm going to choose none for that. Again, I said the, the pickup choice is probably more useful for bass rigs. But again, you might have a variety of guitars and you want to, you're, you've got a, a twin Marshall rig you've set up, for example, and you might tweak it for each of your pickups for your different guitars and save it, right, that's the Marshall rig for when I'm using my telly, that's the Marshall rig for, rig for when I'm using my Les Paul, and that's the Marshall rig for when I'm using my Strat or whatever. All right, but I'll leave that on none. Um, put the pickup type band. You can put a band thing in there, and then you can put keywords. So keywords here will be oh, whatever you like. I don't know rock, gain, angle. I think it's E N G L, isn't it? Um, Two amps, you know, whatever you like, you can put in there, right? So this is a grind angle and a grit amp. That's my description. I've filled all the other things in. And then I save after titling it. So I'll call this Fat Stereo Grind Angle 2. And I save into My Amps 2 folder, right? Boom. And there it is now as the selected preset. Now, it's, I created a folder on the fly as I was saving this. And that folder is instantly available. My amps too. It's ticked, so I know that's where the current preset I just saved is living. And there's the preset ticked inside that with a little dot as well. So that's really good. When you create a folder, whether it's an outer main folder or an inner subfolder, either in your own folders or in the um, library ones, as soon as you create that folder, it's available and visible here. You don't have to close and reopen the plugin or anything like that, right? So I've saved it in this My Amps 2, Fat, Stereo, Grind, Angle, and all the rest of it. And I think I gave it artist name, me, Matt, my name, Matt, right? So when I go to the preset browser, can I search for Matt? Yes. Right, and it's bringing up, well, that's Everything Matters, which has M-A-T-T -T in the title. That's a factory preset. But this one is the one I gave it my name for the artist. So it appears. Then this one I gave it my name in the title. So it appears. So, for example, you know, all of your stuff, you could give it your name and then search for it. Or you could give it your name, say you've got a Fender Strat and a Les Paul. You could give it your name and the word Fender and your name and the word Les Paul or Gibson. And then you just search it for Matt Gibson or Matt Fender and it will bring up all your stuff you've created for either of those guitars or whatever you like, right? Okay. Back to all, right? So we're in all, so there's nothing, there's no qualifying characters or anything ticked, no instrument, no, none of, none of the, the search things, uh, selections are selected. We're looking at everything. And now I can go to the uh, sound character, and if I choose, oh, what the hell was that one? Let me just go back. I've forgotten how I saved it, Matt. Um, yeah, I saved it in the category high gain, right? So clear that. And now if I go to the sound character here and choose high gain, it's going to show me all the factory high gain ones, yes, but in there will be my high gain one. Well, there's several I've made. There's fat stereo grind angle. There's fat stereo grind angle. There's fat stereo grind angle two, which is exactly the same, but I could tweak that and resave it. Uh, there's another one I made grindy, gainy rock stereo that shows you what it's containing. A couple of amps, a couple of cabs, etc. Pedals, processing output effects. Yeah. Um, I, I 
Well, I tend to use underscores in my titles, which makes them stand out more. I always use underscores. It's a habit from the old days when I used to do web stuff and um, everything you typed, you wanted to put underscores so there were no spaces in um, web addresses or image addresses or image titles or anything. So yeah, in the category that I've just chosen for sound character, high gain, I've got some presets as well as the factory ones. I can see, see how that works? It's, it's very clever and that's why you know this this browser is relevant to the thing when you go to save as the way you categorize things helps when you w use the browser is the point right okay okay so there it is um so look, i'll just end by playing you some rigs i built this is the orshall stereo chorus flange right um if i switch to the preset browser it should be the selected one, right? So we see it here. I've got a chorus and a flanger, a Marshall and an orange, Orshall, orange and Marshall combined, two cabs and the same processing parallel rack output effects racks are the same. I can see what it is there if I want to by just switching to the, to the browser. Um, so that's one I made. Okay, um, here's another one I made called Matt Marshall Twin Amp Cab. Again, if I want to see what it is, I just switch to the preset browser, that's what it is. It's two Marshalls, um, an 800 and a red. One of them has got a tube compressor inserted into it as a power distortion pedal. Both amps feed their own cabs and there's no processing effects on the output. <laughs> If I choose this next folder, again, these are all custom folders I created, My Amps 2, there's another one. And that is um, an angle and some vintage amp feeding their own cabs with output effects and there is a chorus on one of the amps coming in. Because the effects, um, the floor pedal pages are in parallel, this feeds that one and nothing in that one feeding that amp. Uh, the next one, My Heavy Rigs, Grindy Grainy Rock Stereo, uh, we looked at it already, didn't we? I have another category as well, I think. Then my orange rigs. There's this one, my orange twin cab chorus. Single orange amp, chorus pedal, two cabs, because the configuration is feeding into two cabs, and a final output of effects. My stereo amp rigs. Well, the Orshall's in there as well. I saved it in there as well. But there's this one, double cab orange chorus. Okay, and it's the similar. A couple of chorus pedals, probably only one's active, into an orange amp, and that splits the two cabs, um, a Marshall and an orange, and then some output processing effects. And then my stereo grind rigs, the fat angle one, with the angle and the other amp and their cabs, etc. Yeah? So, like, there's some custom folders with stuff inside I built, you know. So this all works with the browser, is the point. Uh, this is really clever. Very, very clever. All right, so that's everything, isn't it? Yeah. We looked at everything now, I'm sure. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, Ampl Amplitude 4. It is an absolute beast. It really is superb. And to use my much-worn joke, um, this one, but it's really appropriate uh, with an amp modeling um, plugin. This one goes to 11. It really, it really does. It's just so deep. It's mind blowing, this thing. And it sounds so realistic. It's not just about. I mean, I'm doing more high gain stuff here, right? Because it suits the song. But it's not just about that. Of course it's not. All right? Um, you know, there's, uh, there's all the um, clean stuff as well. You know? Lots and lots of lovely clean amps. Um, if I just, let me just um, choose default. Right, it's a basic single amp and cab rig. Yeah, you know, it, you can do super, all the clean stuff as well. There's a twin reverb look. And it's, the sounds are really authentic. When you're using the old Marshalls and that, you know, you drive them at the right amount and they start to suck on the strings like the old amps do, you know. 
um, in different ways and the tone the woodiness of the cabinets the ambience of the cabinets and things like that it's it's incredibly realistic so but it's not just about high gain stuff every possible genre including bass obviously bass rigs is covered you know it's from the most grungy old uh little bluesy uh, jazzy or whatever type combos you know soul funk everything just every possible type of amp setups that you want is is covered here it's like here's, look, here's an old fender twin right <laughs> Bright on it, smidge of reverb. That's such a realistic sound. There is somewhere. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah, there's an old um, jazz chorus here. And it's got that real nasty, solid state. You know that they. I only used um, jazz chorus a couple of times, so I never owned one. Oh, they're, they're incredibly biting and, and, and hard sounding. So you know, it's it's just a colossal variety of amps. You know, you know, little tiny old things. Just so 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 much variety. Everything from the most extreme metal to the most grunky old school stuff that you want. This thing is an absolute monster. It really is. Incredible stuff. So there you go. As I say, this one goes to 11. Um, I hope that's useful. And um, go and check out the demo, by the way. IK Multimedia always give you real, proper, good demos that you can really try the product. Give it a go. You know, If you're after a modelling rig for all eventualities, this thing will take some beating. It really will. Hope that's useful. I'll see you for the next one.